Good day, everybody. It's Percy Hampton with Handy Electrician. Uh, we are at a project in Jonesboro where we had to finish up. Well, electrician couldn't finish up, so we had to just finish up so they can get an inspection. I'm here with Dave Manley. He came across an electrical issue. This is an opportunity to kind of show you service call 101, show you kind of how things work in the electrical world when stuff happens. This is Dave Manley. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, we Percy uh, helped us out a lot. Uh, we had finishing up the job here. Uh, Cannon Contractors is the contractor. I'm, I'm actually his dad. Uh, and we're punching out the job and I noticed that the breaker didn't work on the inside for the water heater. And then, uh, you know, I couldn't set it. So I, we called Percy who actually helped us out a lot. Uh, we had a previous electrician who ended up just not finishing the job and, and not responding to us. So we, we were thankful to have Percy come in and finish the job. So when I noticed that, I went ahead and we gave him a call to come out here and troubleshoot it. This is a meter socket. This is the meter that Georgia Power reads. This is where the power comes in. This is called a mast. That's the weather head. The homeowner owns from the black on down this way. On that end, Georgia Power owns that and they own the meter. But however, however, if you zoom in here, they screwed into this wall, into this uh, hardy board, and it had an electrical explosion. You can see the black, the black marks exploded over here. It's on this wiring. So the screw was too long and it hit the panel on the inside. I guess they could have measured, put the, put the panels a little higher so that those screws would never do that. Put them in a different cell, but they put them right behind them and the screw from here actually hit the panel on the inside. We'll go on the inside and show you where it came through at. And it's on that same water heater circuit that Mr. Manley was having a problem with. Let's go. All right, so Percy Hampton, Handy Electrician, we're here with Dave Manley, Cannon Construction. So this is a two pole 30 amp Siemens breaker. This is the water heater circuit that was having an issue with. And as you can see, it, it's in a little explosion, little blackness in there where the screw hit the back of the panel. So we got an option whether we're gonna replace the whole panel. That'll be a little more costly to the client, to the customer who've already paid a lot of money or you know, probably outside of their budget. Or we can condense these circuits. I've seen that they have these uh, tandem 20 amp arc fault breakers where we can make space so we can put this water heater circuit on its own two circuits and then we'll blank that off so that because it's been compromised so that no, we won't, nobody won't use it. So from a cost standpoint, I can make a lot more money if I replace the panel, but this is a relationship. So I'm not always trying to make money and hit people in the head. So if it was me, I would condense the circuits put two blanks on the, um, the compromised part of the bus bar. It's not the bus bar, I, has, I have inspected the bus bar. It's not broken, it's just burned where the screw is. I said we blank it off, replace the 30 amp breaker for the water heater, move it up, save these people thousands. A, a, a job that could cost a couple hundred or a couple, uh, 1500 to $2,000. I think if I save them some money, I will get more work in the long run versus, nope, you gotta replace the panel. Some people, some electricians would, but me personally, I would, I'm always looking for the safest, most cost-effective option, not only for my customer, but for the contractor that I'm working with that hired me and him. So that's my, my solution. What you think, Dave? That sounds good to me. I appreciate it. Uh... Again, keeping it safe, if, it's, if, if the outcome is the same, A and B, and the safety is, and, and the functionality is the same, A and B, certainly let's go with the less expensive one, right? We appreciate that, so. That's it. You heard it first. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Good day, everybody. It's Percy Hampton, Handy Electrician. We are back at the Jonesboro Project where the previous electrician had screwed a screw into the um, meter socket and the electrical panel is right directly behind it. So it damaged the bus bar, but not to the point where we have to replace the breaker, I mean, replace the whole panel. So what we did, we ordered some, we, good old Amazon, we ordered some tandem 20 amp breakers 
so we could uh, condense the space and add a new two pole 30 amp breaker for the water heater. Uh, let's see what we got here, man. Home Depot didn't have it, but that's the two pole tandem breaker. That's two arc fault breakers in one. So we need to make space. The panel is completely full. So what I wanted to do was I'm gonna blank off the, um, the part of the bus that's bad. So I'm gonna put two of these uh, breaker blanks in there. I'm gonna replace the 30 amp breaker for the water heater. And I'm gonna add these two tandem breakers so that we could uh, save them money without replacing the panel. Just make space in the panel, put the 30 amp breaker in, button them up. It's gonna be a fast job in and out. Shouldn't take me over 20 minutes. All right guys, so we are at the panel. This is the existing 30 amp breaker for the water heater. We're gonna swap it out because when that screw came through the bus bar, it could have been compromised. So I'm gonna just go ahead and replace everything. I'm gonna get it out the way. I got my little handy tool that fits right in the screw. It's easy to uh, install and uninstall breakers. It fits right in there. I'm gonna just drop this. Here's the new two pole 30 amp breaker right here. You gotta go with the same brand. This is a Siemens panel. So this is a Siemens two pole 30 amp breaker for the water heater. All right, so we're gonna tighten these guys up. I'm not gonna install it yet because I still have to condense the arc fault breakers, but I wanna get it in there and tight. You wanna make sure your connections are tight. You wanna pull the wires, tug on those, make sure they're good. These are the blanks that I'm gonna use afterwards. And then these are the breakers that I'm gonna condense. So we're gonna turn them off and we're gonna install them one at a time. So nothing is wrong with these breakers. So nothing's wrong with them. I usually just give it back to the customer. They can use them on a future project, but they pay for them. These breakers are not cheap. They at least 60 bucks a piece for the singles. And since I got the tandem, those are about like right at 90, 100 bucks. So that's the first one. We got them off. So this is a, a godsend. This is a space saving Siemens arc fault breaker. Whenever you have a panel that doesn't have a lot of spots, these will come in handy. So you can put two circuits on one breaker spot. So that's what we're gonna do. It's got the, the push buttons. You're supposed to test those monthly to make sure that the arc fault breaker is, wor is working properly. On this one, it's a little different. We're just gonna tie the two loads to here, the, the neutrals from the circuit will go to the neutral bar and this white neutral, this pigtail will go to the neutral bar as well. So we're about to get that going. Here we go. Put that guy in there. Get one neutral in there. You always want one neutral per terminal block. You don't want to put two in one if you can help it because sometimes it'll um, give you a bad connection when two wires are in one one breaker slot, so a lot of inspectors, they like to see one wire in one terminal spot. Let me get rid of these single pole tandem breakers. Now we got two. I'm gonna put the other neutral on there in the, turn, in the neutral bar. You wanna make sure you see copper that is, is screwing down on copper. You wanna torque it, make sure it's super tight. I always like to tug the wires, make sure they don't slide out. So these are my two circuits. These are the loads for my two circuits. The neutral or uh, the neutrals from the circuit are on the neutral bar. So now those two loads will go into the breaker. I like to open it up so that the wires slide right in there. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna hit the pigtail first. It goes on the neutral bar as well. And the arc fault breakers, the combination breakers, they're cold now. And uh, you always want to go back with them if you want to be up to cold. Tug it is in there. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to plug these guys in one at a time. One down. We had to order these breakers specially from Amazon. Sometimes Home Depot or Lowe's or the supply house will have them, but they're not so common. So we had to go to Amazon. Amazon has everything. Both of them are tight. 
be careful with your screwdriver when you're working in a panel. Uh, always use insulated screwdrivers like this one. This is insulated, so if something accidentally touches, it'll be protected, but let's see what happens. So the circuits are on. We can test the circuits, make sure they're working properly. They're working, good to go. These lights, if they blink red, they have a code. Like if it blinks three times, it means something. If it blinks, blinks four times, it means something. It'd be a good idea if you have Siemens arc fault breaker to get the legend for the codes that blink on the lights. So sometimes you could troubleshoot it yourself. It could be a bad breaker. It could be something going on with the circuit, but though, though it has lights on there that'll tell you if something's wrong. So we're gonna do the other two. So you see how I put two in one, now that space is open. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one and it's gonna take that space and it's gonna give me room to put that two pole 30 amp breaker in there. That's why we call them space saving breakers. Now we have created two open spot, two open spots in the panel so we could put the put the, the water heater two pole 30 amp breaker in a fresh space that hasn't been compromised like that has. If you can look in there, zoom in there, I don't know if you can see the little black explosion on that bus and on those jaws that the uh, breaker um, ties into, but I wouldn't use it anymore. This stuff is not that expensive because of how electrical fire is like one of the number one causes of house fires. So me, I always err on the side of caution because I don't want to let a hundred dollar breaker cost somebody a $200,000 house. So we always go new. We always go fresh. Um, and we just try to treat every house like it's my house. Electricians got a responsibility, man, to do everything, do their jobs right. Cause you got to sleep at night, man. You don't want to wake up, look on the news and the house is on fire because of something that you did with the electrical system that wasn't tight or that was faulty. So I always say, man, I'm I do every job like it's my house. Or like it's my family that's staying there. All right, everything good. Everything's tight. Put that in right next to that one. It snaps in place. If it's, never, if it's ever not lined up properly, then it's not in properly. Turn them all on, no red lights, no codes. Now we have space for the water heater. Get the water heater in there. Turn that on. Okay, we got an issue. So the breaker is new. We're gonna have to check out the water heater and make sure everything is good on that end. Let me check that out. All right, so we in here with the water heater. The water key heater, heater circuit was tripping when I tried to put that breaker in. So usually your water heater has to have a disconnect. This is called a disconnect, 30 amp disconnect, so that if the plumber is working on here and he's not near the panel, he can pull power, pull this out. This is like a non-fusible disconnect. So I pull this out, now no power should be going to the, uh, the water heater now I can check and check the wiring make sure everything is good nothing's touching um, I'm gonna just I need to see why that uh, water heater is tripping this is the junction box in the top of the water heater I'm gonna open that up to see make sure nothing is burned up inside of here because now the breaker is just tripping on its own we're gonna get to the bottom of it one thing about electricity it will show itself if it has a problem usually it'd be black smoke like an explosion, something like that, but I need to figure out why that breaker's not holding. And it's a brand new breaker. 
Uh, so this wasn't even wired up. That's why that breaker was tripping. As soon as we turned it on, the breaker was tripping. So we're gonna wire it up. We're gonna get it right. And uh, go behind other electricians because there's so much that you have to check behind to see if they did what they were supposed to do right. So it was tripping. This red wire was touching something. It didn't have a wire nut on it. The wire nut had fell off. These wires weren't connecting. So I'm almost positive it was touching something metal in here. So usually we just wire color to color. Both of them are hot. Water heaters never get a neutral. They just get two hots in the ground. We're gonna wire it up. And we're gonna put that breaker back in and it should hold oh, now. This is why I like service work because it's like, you just gotta be Sherlock Holmes and figure out what's going on. And you get paid for finding people's problems, you know, for figuring out what the issue is. You wanna twist these wire nuts. These, are, these red things are called wire nuts. That's how you splice the wires or connect the wires together. You wanna twist them till they don't twist no more. You wanna make sure they on there tight as possible. So, you put it back together. Like I say, electricity will show itself if it's a problem. That breaker would not hold with those wires loose inside of here. And that's a good thing, they, they protecting your property, protecting your investment. When you go back, the breaker shouldn't trip. Just cover back on the disconnect. Put the non-fusible pull out back in there. You gotta make sure you put it in there the right way. Close that back up. Let's see if it holds this time. All right, follow me to the panel. Let's go. So now I'm gonna reinstall this 30 amp two pole, 40, 240, 30 amp, 240 volt breaker in there. Let's see. Get back on. Now it's holding. We're gonna check the voltage. Make sure everything is good. We'll put two blanks right there. Button this panel back up and they back in business. A lot easier, a lot faster than swapping out this whole panel. Percy Hampton, handy electrician. All right, so now that we install the tandem 20 amp arc fault breakers and the new 30 amp 240 volt breaker for the water heater, I like to test them. You wanna make sure the voltage is correct. I use this ideal multimeter. You want to make sure you want to know your meter, know the settings, put it on AC voltage. I'm going to check the water heater first. I'm going to go across each lead and I should get 240 or close to it. So I got 243 on that. So that's good power. Now I'm going to go, the, this is the neutral. I'm going to go across the neutral to each one of the lows to make sure I'm getting 120. I'm going to sit this down right here, but I'm going to go across the neutral bar. You always test the neutral ac across your hot, and it should give you 120. 121. 121. 121. 121. So now I know for myself that I checked to make sure the power was good. We, we put in new breakers. We uh, checked the power. Now I can tell the customer, hey, everything is good to go, and I can warranty what I did. Percy Hampton, the electrician.